what was it like for you being in all that makeup? Did you scare people like on the set for what you went through? Yeah, yeah, in season one for the first couple of weeks for sure. But I, uh-huh. I ate lunch alone a lot. <laughs> or people would sit beside me, they wouldn't want to sit across I the guess table it would kind of be unappetizing what you went through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I spent a couple hours in makeup every day and then, uh, yeah, I got to eat alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was beautiful makeup. It was really kind of an honor to wear it. It was like wearing art. I, um, was your role supposed to be as big as it was in the beginning, or did they know where they were going to take take you? Uh, no, they didn't. I, I've spoken to uh, Steve Maeda, the showrunner, mm-hmm. and some of the producers. Um, I think in season one, uh, Peter was really only supposed to survive until the fourth or fifth episode, and mm-hmm. then they were going to kill him off. But uh, I don't know. Some they, fun, fun things were happening. Yeah, they so. liked you so well that I think it was just it took it what took on a life of its own, and you were the vector king, and yeah, just yeah, went, it just went crazy. Yeah, it went a really fun direction. It did. Was that the first time that you um, really got involved in Twitter and in, in, in interacting with the fans? And what was your experience with that? Uh, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, I'm, I guess I had opened a Twitter account maybe sometime a mm-hmm. bit before that in the year mm-hmm. but I really only got active on it uh, yeah. once Helix aired yeah. uh, and it was it was a blast yeah. interacting with the fans they're great they had great feedback they're so passionate about it it makes it so much I guess as a fan and you're tweeting and you're watching you, you feel so inclusive you know and you get to be involved in that and and I really appreciate that. So you have done some a lot of voiceover work, mm-hmm. and I was shocked to see that. I thought that was really cool. So how did that happen? Uh, it's one of the one of the avenues uh, actors have to uh, to make a living. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of my career has been in Montreal, Canada, mm-hmm. and, and Ubisoft uh, has a big presence there. They do. They've been doing video games yeah. out of there for a while. Yeah. And so I got into that loop, and um, I've actually done more performance capture than just straight voice. So oh, so you have all the dots on yeah, you? Yeah, so you do the motion capture, and, and uh-huh. they, they build the character on, on your body and on your face, and you also do the voice. Yeah. So it's like an electronically captured performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the technology is mind-blowing. Oh, my goodness. I, I didn't realize you went through all that. Do you mm-hmm. feel claustrophobic having all that on you? No, I love a Velcro suit. It's like where <laughs> I do every time I'm doing it. I look down at myself at some point, and I'm surrounded by these five, six other other actors all wearing yeah. Velcro tights, <laughs> and I think to myself, I'm an adult, and yeah. this is my job. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Do you think villains, playing the villain is more fun than playing like the hero, and you have more latitude? Um, you have more secrets, okay. and I, I, I really find it um, really exciting to play characters that have secrets uh-huh. um, and uh, are conflicted. Okay. So I think good villains are conflicted. They think they're doing the right thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I always, uh, yeah, I always get these characters that are, are not what they seem. Mm-hmm. Yeah.